Hey guys, today we are going to finish up talking about graphing uh, quadratic functions. And today we're going to graph quadratic functions in factored form. So I gave you a worksheet last week and you completed 1 through 16. If you will pause the video and find that worksheet, um, I'm going to do 17, 18, and 19 with you to teach you how to do this in factored form. All right, the steps to graphing in factored form are to find the two x-intercepts of the parabola, find the axis of symmetry, and then find the vertex. So, for example, this is number 17 on your worksheet. Um, if you've lost your worksheet or you can't find it right now, um, just go ahead and get a graph piece of paper out and sketch this with me, or just a notebook sheet of paper will do just fine. So to find the x-intercepts, I went over this very briefly in the last class. What you're going to do is find, to find x-intercepts, you find where it crosses this axis. And if it crosses this axis, then y is 0. To prove that to you, if you think about that ordered pair, that would be 4, 0. If you think about this ordered pair, that would be negative 4, 0. That's 1, 0. So everywhere you go, the y is 0 on that axis. So on this one, we are going to define the two x-intercepts. We are going to set the y equal to 0 and then solve for x. So you're going to set that equal to 0. And I went over in the last class that either this piece can be 0 or this piece. So what you do is you set both of those equal to 0 and you solve for x. So if I solve for x here, I get x equals 0 and I get x equals negative 3. So that means, and I'll just do this on this first one and not the next two, but if I put in x equals 0 here, x, yeah, x equals, oh, there's a mistake, not x equals 0, that would be 1, because you would add 1, sorry about that. So you would add 1 over here to get x equals 1 and subtract 3 here to get x equals negative 3. So what we're going to do now is put 1 in for x. So if in this function I put 1 in for x, here and here, I would get 0 times 4, which is going to be 0. So your ordered pair would be 1 comma 0. And then if I put negative 3 in for x, it would be negative 4 times 0. And this would be 0, so your order pair would be negative 3, 0. So what happens is this is an x-intercept and this is an x-intercept. So 1, 0 would be an ordered pair, as I proved to you here. And then negative 3, 0 would be an ordered pair, as I proved to you here. So those would be your x-intercepts. Now, to find the next step is to find the axis of symmetry. And we went over this as well. If I have these two ordered point ordered pairs, the axis of symmetry is going to be in the middle of those. So if you think about that, this is an x-intercept and this is an x-intercept. If I go over 1 and over 1, and then this would be in the very middle. So I'm going to change my color to green. That would be your axis of symmetry because it's right in the middle of these two points. Okay, and then you just go back to how you was doing it in the other, um, in standard form. To find the, the vertex, you plug in that number in for x to solve for y. So if this is the axis of symmetry, the vertex is somewhere on this line. So that x, the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 1 because that's that line right there. So right here, I'm going to go back to the original function and I'm going to put in negative 1 everywhere I see an x. So here and here. So negative 1 minus 1 and negative 1 plus 3. y equals negative 2 times 2 and that's going to be negative 4. So your vertex would be negative 1, negative 4. 
So your vertex is going to be negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's your vertex. And your parabola would go through all three of those points. And there it is. So let's recap. Here's your x-intercepts. Your axis of symmetry was x equals negative 1. And then your vertex was negative 1, negative 4. Okay, let's go to the next one. Here, you find the x-intercepts the same way. You're going to set each piece equal to 0. So I'm going to put 0 in for y, and then solve for x. Now what do you do with this 2? That 2 is like the a value, so it, it has the same characteristics as standard form and vertex form. Okay, so 2 would make it narrow and it would open up essentially. But if you set that 2 equal to 0, like we're going to do in just a minute, we set this equal to 0, and we set this equal to 0. Notice 2 equals 0, that doesn't make sense, it's a false statement. So since that's false, it just goes away. When I solve for x in this one, I get negative 6, and when I solve for x in this one, I get negative 4. So I'm not going to go through the whole explanation, but if I put in negative 6 up here, I want to get 0 for y, and if I put negative 4 in for x, I want to get 0 for y. So your ordered pairs would be negative 6, negative 4, excuse me, negative 6, comma 0, negative 4, comma 0, which is going to be found, these are the x-intercepts, so I want to go to negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 4. Now, where's your axis of symmetry going to be? Right in the middle of those. And if this is negative 6, and this is negative 4, then your axis of symmetry is going to be negative 5. x equals negative 5. And how do you find the vertex? You plug it back in. So you're going to put y equals, 2 is there, and then negative 5 in for both x's. I'm going to get y equals 2, and then in here would be go to 1. This would go to negative 1. So your vertex is going to be 2 times 1, which is 2 times negative 1. It's negative 2. So your vertex is going to be negative 5, negative 2. So negative 5, negative 2. There's your vertex. So your parabola is going to go through all three of those points. Alright, and the next problem. y equals negative 3x times x minus 1. So the first thing you do is find the x-intercepts. You set 0, you set y equal to 0. And then this looks a little bit different because it's missing a parenthesis, but it doesn't matter. Each piece is set equal to 0. Just as I set this 2 equal to 0, but it was a false statement, I'll set this piece equal to 0 and this piece equal to 0. I'm going to set this piece equal to 0 and then this piece. So negative 3 fourths x equals 0. And x minus 1 equals 0. So if I divide by negative 3 fourths, 0 divided by a number is just going to be 0. If I add 1, I'm going to have x equals 1. So the vertices are going to, excuse me, the x-intercepts are going to be at 0 and at 1. Now, where is the axis of symmetry going to be? The axis of symmetry is going to be in the middle of those two. So it's going to be at x equals 1 half. All right, now we have to find the vertex. So I'm going to go back to the original. And instead of x, I'm going to put in a half. Negative 3 fourths times a half would be negative 3 eighths. Oh, sorry, I forgot to stick in. Oh. Let's do that again. 
just start over here. Okay, so we have negative 3 fourths, and I put in a half for x and a half for x. That's better. Oh, could have kept that. Um, that's going to be negative 3 eighths and 1 half minus a half would be negative 1 half. If I multiply those together, it's 3 sixteenths. So the vertex is 1 half, that's your axis of symmetry, and then comma 3 sixteenths. Which is going to be 1 half 3 sixteenths is going to be a little bit below. So your parabola will go through all three of those points. And that's your parabola. That's how you factor using factor form. So you need to complete the rest of that worksheet through 18. And then you need to pick up a new worksheet and go back and do standard form vertex and some more um, factored forms. That will be due Wednesday when I get back.